Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning to everybody and welcome to anybody here, but also everybody online. We hope that you enjoy your time of worship with us. Today's a great day to be at church. Uh, a couple of announcements just before we begin. Uh, of most importance is we want to welcome our student intern, Tom Hubschmidt. Uh, you will see him during the procession. FYI, he's the person you don't recognize. Um, and so his wife also, Tanya, is here, um, and they're going to be with us for the next three months. And so we are definitely pleased to have them with us. Um, after the service, if you're able to, please uh, make yourself known, greet them, welcome them, um, because we find it very exciting for them to uh, be with us over the next couple months. Obviously, Tom is one of the people who is going to be ordained on the 19th in at Holy Cross at 7 o'clock. Of course, the other person being ordained is our own Carol Tubman. Um, and it's going to be just a fabulous celebration. Um, it's going to be a service of rejoicing. And if you've never seen an ordination service, uh, we do highly recommend that you come because it's a glorious service. We will be live streaming uh, for anybody who doesn't feel like they can make it to the service or doesn't feel comfortable coming to the service. All the other announcements, they are printed in your bulletin, and so please take your bulletin home, make sure that you're aware of what's happening in the life of the church. Um, one announcement that I do want to make that is not in uh, the bulletin. During one of our iterations of opening and then closing and then opening and then closing, um, if you remember way back at the start of the pandemic, one of the things that we requested or asked people to do was um, if they chose to, to to take one of our red cushions and take it home so that when they came to the church, they could bring their own cushion and, um, and we weren't worried about who sat on this last and where was this and all that stuff. Um, and we kind of had made that announcement at the start of the pandemic. What that has meant is that we now have very few cushions um, in the church for people who are coming to church now and who might need them. And so if you happen to have one or two of those big red cushions at home, uh, we would definitely ask you, please bring it back um, at your earliest convenience so that we can make those available uh, for anybody who needs them. If you have any questions about this or any of our announcements, you can talk to myself after the service. Uh, we are not having coffee time uh, today. Uh, we are trying to manage our volunteers, and so there will not be coffee time um, this after church. But please hang out in the narthex and again meet Tom and, and Tanya. But we are here to worship, and so worship we shall. Our opening hymn is number 328, Lo, God is here, let us adore.
Our service today continues on page 67 of our Book of Common Prayer. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. join me in the reading of the Collect of the Day, found in your bulletin. Let us pray. O God, God of, of peace, peace who, who brought, brought again from, from the, the dead, dead our Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ the great, great shepherd, shepherd of the sheep, by, by the blood of the eternal covenant, covenant make us perfect in every good work to do your will. will. And, and work in us that which is well-pleasing in your sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. You may be seated, and I would like to invite any children who is watching just to tune your attention to the screen before you for a kid's time. And I want to talk about some of the things that we like and how sometimes when you put two things that you like, one thing that you like here, and one thing you like over here, and you put them together, well, I can be pretty amazing, right? So, like, name some of the stuff that you might like as a kid. So, like, um, hot dogs. Kids like hot dogs. I like hot dogs, right? And if you put that together with um, macaroni, you put them in it, well, that's just amazing, right? That's wonderful. What about pizza? You like pizza. Um, and chocolate. A chocolate pizza. That's pretty good, isn't it? Right? So, I want to let you know, you take stuff that you like, like a, a nice sunny day outside, and maybe playing in a park, and you put them together, and it's lovely. It just makes it all that much better. So I want to let you know about something that we're going to do here at the church in a couple weeks. Because we're doing that. We're going to take two things that we like, and we're putting them together. So on June 5th, so if you have a calendar, you can go to the calendar and you can circle June 5th. It's a couple weeks. We're going to take one of the things that we like, church. Because we like church. We hope that you like church too. We're going to take church and we're going to take another thing that we like, ice cream. <laughs> Yay, exactly. And we're putting them together, right? And so on June 5th, we're having ice cream Sunday. Yay! Right? It's going to be a fun time. Now, if the day is nice, we're going to be outside in the parking lot and in the park, and you can play on the playground there. Um, if it's not nice outside, we'll do that inside here in the church. Um, but we wanted to let you know, because we know that kids really like ice cream, we wanted to give you just a heads up. So you can talk to your moms and your dads or your grandmas and grandpas and you can say, hey, I want to be a part of this fabulous day where we take church and we put it together with ice cream for Ice Cream Sunday. So I just wanted you to know that. Thank you for tuning in. We hope that you know that we miss you very much. We hope that you know that Jesus loves you very much. And we look forward to when we can see you in church again. And now we are going to have the readings from the Bible. The 
The first reading is from the Acts, beginning at chapter 9. Now in Joppa, there was a disciple whose name was Tabitha, which in Greek is Dorcas. She was devoted to good works and acts of charity. At that time, she became ill and died. When they had washed her, they laid her in a room upstairs. Since Lydda was near Joppa, the disciples who heard that Peter was there sent two men to him with a request, please come to us without delay. So Peter got up and went with them. And when he arrived, they took him to the room upstairs. All the widows stood beside him, weeping and showing tunics and other clothing that Dorcas had made while she was with them. Peter put all of them outside, and then he knelt down and prayed. He turned to the body and said, Tabitha, get up. Then she opened her eyes. And seeing Peter, she sat up. He gave her his hand and helped her up. Then, calling the saints and widows, he showed her to be alive. This became known throughout Joppa, and many believed in the Lord. Meanwhile, he stayed in Joppa for some time with a certain Simon, a tanner. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our opening hymn, or sorry, our psalm, is Psalm number 23. You may find this on page 356. I invite us to say this psalm responsively by the half verse. The Lord is my shepherd. You shall feed me in a green pasture. He shall restore my soul. And bring me forth from the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff comfort me. Thou shalt prepare a table before me in the presence of them that trouble me. Surely thy loving kindness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The second reading is from Revelation chapter 7. After this, I looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God who is seated on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, singing, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom, and thanksgiving, and honor, and power, and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these robed in white, and where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you are the one that knows. Then he said to me, these are they who have come out of the great ordeal, 
They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason, they are before the throne of God and worship him day and night within his temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to the springs of the water of life, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We stand for our gradual hymn, which is printed in your bulletin insert, We Will Glorify. The Lord be with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. John. At that time, the Feast of Dedication took place at Jerusalem. It was winter, and Jesus was walking in the temple in the colonnade of Solomon. So the Jews gathered around him and said to him, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered them, I told you, and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name bear witness about me. But you do not believe because you are not among my sheep. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they will never perish, and no one will snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all, and no one is able to snatch them out of the Father's hand. I and the Father are one. The Gospel of Christ. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of the Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, 
being of one substance with the Father, through whom all things were made, who for us and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As you stand, let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. Well, this past week, I was in the thriving metropolis of Prince Albert, Saskatchewan. I was there for the provincial synod of the ecclesiastical province of Gruppetsland. I know, like putting two things that you love together is, you know, what a part of that does not sound like a good time. Um, it was actually just uh, a wonderful time. The synod was filled with energy and life. There was an excitement that surrounded what we did as a synod and the relationships that were being formed. I personally uh, left the synod feeling challenged, feeling inspired, and feeling most of all hopeful. This is because the big event of Provincial Synod, the one that made the news, the one that got everybody talking, was the visit of the Archbishop of Canterbury. Yes, I got to meet him. Yes, I spoke with him. We are now best friends. Uh, his Grace, the Most Reverend and Right Honorable Lord Archbishop of Canterbury, Justin Welby. Like, that's a title, isn't it? Whew. Um, he was there. He attended our synod for the sole purpose of reconciliation and healing with the Indigenous of Canada. This is the first time, I think, that a head of a denomination, like a global head, has traveled to Canada to repent and apologize for the church's role in the history of residential schools and the ongoing cycle of hurt. The Archbishop modeled in his actions as well as his words the call for the church to be a community of Christ, a community that I think we see beautifully pictured in our reading from Revelation. John looks into heaven and sees this sea of people dressed in white robes surrounding the throne of God and serving God in the heavenly temple. And they are described as a great multitude of every tribe, every nation, every people, and every language. All are one, standing before the throne of God. God's vision of the heavenly community in heaven is multi-ethnic and multilingual and multinational. The work of Provincial Synod doesn't always make its way down to the parishes. It kind of remains in the ether a little bit, and it's only there to be seen by people who are really interested in this kind of thing. But this synod was important. It was historic. And it was valuable. And I think it was life-giving to the church, and I think we would do well to reflect on it. And so this morning, I want to reflect on the Provincial Synod and the call to reconciliation. Reconciliation is something that we all need, and it's something that we are all called to work towards. In another place of the Bible, um, Paul writes that God reconciled us to God's self through Christ, and thus has given us the ministry of reconciliation. We are to embody this. Now, obviously, the purpose of the Archbishop's visit was to work reconciliation with the indigenous of Canada, but 
if we are to be the church, our vision of reconciliation needs to be wider than that. It, it also has to extend to families. It has to extend to workplaces. It has to extend to people that we disagree with. Anybody that we are tempted to dismiss or deny or reject for whatever reason. That may even be ourselves. We can reject ourselves. We can look at ourselves and think that there's no way that I can possibly fit into God's vision for heaven. But the heart of reconciliation is this picture of the saintly tapestry. Because if God includes people from every tribe, nation, people, and language, then who are we to assume that another is not welcome in God's kingdom, in the church, or in God's heart. Now, because that's the vision, the road of reconciliation necessitates that we recognize where we haven't lived this out. Where we have, as we say in our liturgy sometimes, where we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. In his speech at the banquet, the archbishop mentioned how reconciliation demands that each party sit in relationship. That each party be vulnerable enough to tell their story and to hear each other's story. And that means there can never be any bravado. There can be no saving face. There can be no pride. For two days, Archbishop Welby was willing to sit in that relationship. He spent an afternoon at one of the local reserves and he heard story after story of the church's role in residential schools. He heard about the ongoing struggle that the indigenous have today, still, regarding their loss of language, their loss of culture, and their loss of tradition. He heard about the ongoing uh, hurt of broken families, the rampant incarceration, and the overwhelming plague of substance abuse amongst the indigenous today. And he listened, and he listened intently. In fact, there was this beautiful moment that I got to witness. I don't know if anybody else did. Uh, One moment during the banquet, I went outside, and um, it had been a long day, so I went outside to get some fresh air and to call Alicia, uh, call home and see how everything was. And I stood outside in the front of the Coronet Hotel where we were staying, and as I was speaking to Alicia, I turned around and I saw through the lobby window, I saw the Archbishop, again, sitting in the lobby all by himself, sitting with another person, again, just listening to their story. Now, this is the Archbishop of Canterbury. He could have easily found a polite way to say that it was more important for him to be in the banquet with the other dignitaries. After all, the banquet was held in his honor. That's why we were having it. He could have easily rested upon his popularity, or his importance, or his prestige. And I know he would have done that very, very politely. But he didn't. He left the banquet, again thrown in his honor, in order to sit in relationship and to hear the story of one who was hurting. I think he sat there probably for a good half an hour. It's easy to view the call of reconciliation as contained only towards the people who are like us, or who we like. I have no problem being reconciled to my best friend. But it's the people who are other than us, who who we have the tendency to reject. That is where the call of repentance really hits home. We must recognize that the call to Christ is always, the call of Christ is always to push us beyond the borders of our own likeness. Jesus embraced the high elite who were considered, um, sorry, he embraced those that the religious elite of the day considered unworthy, who they considered unredeemable or backwards and forgotten and ignored. Jesus embraced them. And we in the church, we must follow suit. If we are unwilling to extend grace to someone, then we are not living out God's vision of the heavenly community. We are not living out God's vision for the church. And so as we dwell in a relationship with one another, 
messy relationships. Reconciliation also demands the work of repentance and atonement. The Archbishop of Canterbury didn't just come to listen. He didn't come just to pacify. He came to speak voice to the repentance that all Anglicans are called to feel over our history with the indigenous of Canada. And he was heartfelt, and he was unscripted, and he was deeply sorrowful. One of the statements that he made, which if you were watching the news during last week, you probably would have seen it because it very quickly made the news rounds. He said this. Um, this is one of the apologies, his first apology that he made to the indigenous leaders. He said, the grace that you, the indigenous leaders, have shown in saying that it was not the church that did this, I suppose is an extraordinary grace. I want to say that this is the only thing that I question. No, it was not the church that did it, but it was the church that permitted it, that allowed it, that turned a blind eye to it and still does sometimes. And for that terrible crime, sin, evil, of deliberately, consciously, and stupidly building hell and putting children into it and staffing it, I am more sorry than I could ever, ever begin to express. It wasn't a prepared speech. He had spoken from the heart. That wasn't something that his media consultant had crafted for him and labored over perfect words to say. In fact, when the time came for him to read his previously prepared speech, the one that he, either he wrote or was written for him back in England, he said he ripped it up because he wanted to, he didn't want to speak in a way that suggested that he hadn't heard from the people. He wanted to convey repentance and sorrow. Now, dwelling in repentance is hard and it's uncomfortable. But it's necessary if we fully wish to be the church that Jesus calls us to be. Voicing our deep sorrow authentically and prayerfully for any break in our relationships. It is that which allows us to grow into who we should be as a Christian person and as the church. Reconciliation is rooted in the vulnerability that means we risk, we risk declaring our sorrow over hurting others by our words or actions or by the failure of our words or actions. Reconciliation is coming together to be the presence of Christ for each other and to each other and to receive the presence of Christ in the other. And so the question that was before us, or that is before us, the question that was before the Synod, the question that rests on the shoulders of every Anglican church in our communion, is how do we live out this reconciliation? How do we express in word and deed that call to a renewed relationship? I can tell you that one of the motions that was passed, if you've never been to a provincial synod or a synod, one of the things that you do is you pass motions. Some of the motions are interesting, some of the motions might not be interesting. Uh, one of the motions that we passed was to begin the process of changing the name of the ecclesiastical province. Because it was recognized um, by the indigenous and by the non-indigenous uh, delegates that there is a certain colonial arrogance to calling ourselves the ecclesiastical province of Rupert's Land. Because that name stems back to the time when these intrepid explorers arrived on the shores of the Hudson Bay and claimed this land for Prince Rupert. That's where the name comes from. Didn't matter that people were living there. Didn't matter that these people had no clue who Prince Rupert was. The land was discovered. And it was claimed for the crown. And so there was this recognition that that name itself contains a certain amount of hurt. And so moving towards changing the name is but a small gesture to say that the Synod wants to move forward in a renewed relationship. In a relationship and in a spirit of partnership, 
one of deep respect, and most of all, Christian love. Now, it's easy to get lost in the systemic issues. Perhaps that's why I think John's vision is so important for us and so helpful. Because the heavenly community, that picture of the saints around the throne of God, they aren't there because they are perfect. They are there because they are loved. They are there because we are redeemed. Their robes are washed in the blood of Jesus, and they serve him in the holy and eternal temple. They are forgiven, they are loved, they are accepted. And that includes you, and that includes me, and that includes people that we might be tempted to reject. And so perhaps the way forward is for us to recognize where we need to cultivate deeper relationships with those that we may be tempted to keep at arm's length. Is there a people that you dismiss? Is there a group that you discard? Is there a person that you turn away from? Reconciliation can't just be about words. It must be about a way of life, a way, we, way where we have Jesus shine through us. Because it makes no sense to speak words of reconciliation, but to diminish a people's identity or culture, or to limit their use of name or language. That is not the way of Christ. And when that tension rises within us, and let's be honest, every once in a while that tension does rise, because we all can be tempted to believe that heaven is reserved for people like me. The temptation that we can all find ourselves in. And so when that tension rises within us, we are called to repent, to turn away from those feelings and turn to the outstretched arms of Jesus, which reaches over us and over the other. May the vision of the multitude of saints gathered around the throne from every people, nation, tribe, and language, may that be our vision as well, not just of heaven, but also of the church.
Please stand, sit, or kneel, whichever prayer position is most comfortable for you, and join me in today's prayers. At the bidding, Lord, in your mercy, please respond with, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for your guidance for the Church of Christ throughout the world. We pray that your messages of peace, love, and healing will be spread all over the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the worldwide Anglican Communion, today we pray for Eglise Anglicane du Rwanda, which has eight dioceses and has a role as a healing ministry to the many traumatized people who live there, and has also been involved in rural development, medical work, vocational training, and education of the Rwandan people. In the Anglican Church of Canada, we pray for the Most Reverend Linda Nichols, Primate. Today we pray for the Diocese of Central Newfoundland and their bishop, the Right Reverend John Watton. In the Diocese of Calgary, we pray for the Most Reverend Gregory Kerr Wilson, our Archbishop and Metropolitan of Rupert's Land. Today we pray for Christ Church Parish and their priests, the Reverend Brandon Whitwer, retired commander, the Reverend John Wilcox, the Reverend C. McPhail Jones, and the very Reverend Robert T. Pinn. We also pray for all vocational and transitional deacons within the diocese. We pray for our companion diocese of the Windward Islands and their bishop, the Right Reverend Leopold Friday. We pray for Holy Trinity, Castries with St. Mary Lakai on the island of St. Lucia and their priests, the Venerable Christian Glasgow and the Reverend Deacon Kadisha Sharp. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our world. Today, we pray for peace in Lesotho. Lesotho is a mountain kingdom in South Africa. It's been torn up by rivalry between stars of an accordion-based style of music, <coughs> pardon me, which has sparked years of deadly gang warfare that has turned this tiny country into what is known as the murder capital of the African continent. We pray for an end to the continued conflicts and horrors which is happening in Ukraine. We pray for all people who are suffering from results of war and violence. We pray that you will guide the hearts of world leaders and provide this world with a peace that is only found in you. We pray for reconciliation, for an end to all the division between individuals, groups, and nations. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have been affected by natural disasters or terrorist attacks. We pray for those suffering from any form of sickness or ailment. Lord, if it is your will, we pray that you would heal them. We ask that you be with them, comfort them, and provide them with peace. Be with their families that are struggling as they watch their loved ones suffer. Provide them with love and a sense of your hope. We pray that you would redeem our world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our parish of Holy Cross. Today we pray for Bible study, both individual Bible study as well as group Bible study, including the Zoom through Babylon Bible study. We pray that you will provide guidance and understanding of your plans for us people while reading, studying, and discussing scripture. We pray this week for our parish members, Dale and Barb, Cynthia, Aaron and Emma, Diane, and Evelyn. Let them feel your loving presence this week and forevermore. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. People in and beyond our parish have faithfully asked us for our prayers. Please join me in praying their first names aloud. Doug. Anna, Barbara, Lucille, Doreen, Catherine, 
Alan and Gladys, Joyce, Catherine, Beverly, Doris, Greg, Charlene, Claire, Brenda, Keith, Mary, Andrea, Wayne and Bev, Joel, and Chanson. In a moment of silence, let us remember any others who are on our hearts or in our minds. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, thank you for mothers. Be with those who are grieving because they have no mother. Be close to those who are struggling because they have no children of their own. Be near to those who are sad because they are far apart from those who they love. Let your love be present in every home and help your church to have eyes to see and ears to hear the needs of all who come. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Ye that do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbors and intend to lead the new life following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession to Almighty God, meekly kneeling upon your knees. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all people, we acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins, to all that heartily repentance and true faith turn unto him. Have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite you to please stand. Having been reconciled with God, we are called to be reconciled to each other. The peace of the Lord be always with you. I invite you to share a sign of peace just to those who are around you. And God's peace to those who are watching online. Together we sing our offertory hymn number 225, Come Away to the Skies.
Blessed be thou, Lord God of Israel, forever and ever. All that is in the heaven and the earth is thine. All things come of thee, and of thine own have we given thee. Amen. Our service continues at the bottom of page 77 with the comfortable words. Hear what comfortable words our Savior Christ saith unto all that truly turn to him. Come unto me, all that labor and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Hear also what St. Paul saith. This is a true saying and worthy of all to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St. John saith. If anyone sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee. O Lord, Holy Father, almighty, everlasting God, creator and preserver of all things, therefore with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name evermore praising thee and singing. Blessing and glory and thanksgiving be unto thee, almighty God, our heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to take our nature upon him, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world and did institute, and in his holy gospel command us to continue, a perpetual memorial of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and grant that we, receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. On the same night that he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this. For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it, in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, we thy humble servants, with all thy holy church, remembering the precious death of thy beloved Son, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again in glory, to make before thee in the sacrament of the holy bread of eternal life and the cup of everlasting salvation the memorial which he hath commanded. And we entirely desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, 
and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And we pray that by the power of thy Holy Spirit, all we who are partakers of this Holy Communion may be fulfilled with thy grace and heavenly benediction through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table. But thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed with his precious blood. And that we may enter the Lord in the Amen.
Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank thee that thou dost graciously feed us in these holy mysteries. With the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, assuring us thereby of thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are living members of his mystical body, which is the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of the everlasting kingdom. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee. And although we are unworthy, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. I invite the congregation to please stand. <coughs> The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you this day and forevermore. Our recessional hymn is number 349, All People That on Earth Do Dwell.
us go forth to love and serve our Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia.